Hi everyone, I'm Liz, and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 8. I'm excited to be back with you guys this week to give you an update on how my fall frenzy has gone. Um, I'm going to talk about a few other things that I made this week. Um, of course, I'm going to tell you what shops I gave my money to this week. So Kim, um, Barbara's daughter, uh, you know, stop, don't watch that section because it's probably not going to be good for your wallet. Um, uh, I want to talk about some fabric that I dyed this week. Um, and I'll talk about my plans for week two of Fall Frenzy. So uh, let's jump into it. I have a previous finish that I want to show you. Um, this is the only Halloween thing I've ever stitched <laughs> until this week. Um, and so let me show you. It's from Prairie Schooler Boo to You. And this is a cardstock copy that I found somewhere. I don't remember. It might have been just one, two, three stitch, but I really like the cardstock. I know the reprints are all on, um, you know, just printer paper, but um, these cardstock versions are really nice. Um, so I did the little black cat, and let me show you. <laughs> Here he is. Um, I did this. I believe completely called for. Did I change that green? I don't think so. I think I did it. I'm looking at the picture. Um, yeah, I think I did it completely called for. Uh, and I made this for Rob, I think last year for Halloween. Um, oh yeah. So he moved in to my house um, right before Halloween last year. Um, and so uh, it's kind of like a home decor because I let him um, take over, you know, the office in my house with like as like his office um, because I already have a craft room. What do I need a craft room and an office for? Uh, anyways, so I let him take over the office. Um, and so I like had this in there on um, the bookshelf that was in there just as like a little, you know, I don't know. It, it just is just cute. It, he has a black cat. He loves black cats. So um, I made him this little this little black cat wearing a bow tie. <laughs> um, it was, you know, super quick, easy stitch. I think I did it on some sort of 28 count. It's not even weave, is it? It might, mm, it looks like a linen. I think it's just some sort of 28 count linen I had um, with all of the called for DMC. And then I finished it into just a little standalone piece um, that, and I got this little, um, picture frame thing, picture frame holder at Hobby Lobby. And this is how it just sits on a little shelf in his office. Super cute. Um, and so I finished it similar to an ornament in terms of um, either mat board or sticky board. I can't remember now um, with batting and then the piece wrapped around it. And then a second piece of mat board just to make it extra sturdy um, and extra thick since it was a standalone um, wrapped in this just quilting fabric I had that was black. And then I just used some little green rickrack coming out the sides. And I love how it turned out. So yeah, that's the only Halloween thing I'd ever stitched until this week. So, okay. So let's talk about some finishes this week. Um, I'd finished my second ever Halloween <laughs> item and my first new start for fall frenzy. Um, I'll insert a picture of the pattern cause I already put it away, but it's the trilogy Halloween tree spooky. And here is my finish. I just love how this came out. It's so cute. <laughs> um, so I stitched this on 36 count limestone Zweigert um, that I had over dyed with some brown and gray um, writ dye. Um, this is the same fabric I'm using for my land that I love. Um, so I had a little scrap left. And so I used that for my little spooky tree. Um, I still haven't found buttons. Um, I think the pattern was supposed to come with the three little orange buttons, but it didn't. Um, that's okay. I think I like it as is. I think I'm just going to finish it as is. I don't think it needs the orange buttons. We'll see. I might put in some smear and crosses or some specialty stitch to fill the spots. Um, but yeah, super cute. And I love how it turned out. So that was my first start and finish of Fall Frenzy. And now let me show you the second one, which is one of my favorite things I've stitched in a long time. Um, 
So the second Fall Frenzy project that I started and finished this week was Ye Old Crow Sampler by Heart and Hand Needle Art. Um, and here is the finish. Oh, I love it. This is so cool. Um, so this is stitched on a 35 count Weeks Dye Works Tiger's Eye. That's pretty accurate. It's a pretty rusty burn orange. Um, might be a little bit brighter in person than it's reading. Yeah, on camera. Um, I just love this. You can see down here, um, I was a little worried about the black coverage because I like to stitch one over two. So I tested it out before I actually started the big piece. And I think it looks so cool. Um, yeah. So I stitched one over two um, and I used Black Coffee by Classic Color Works, which wasn't the called for floss. I just really liked the black to brown um, variegation. And otherwise I stitched it as is. Just added my initials in the year down there. And I just love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Uh, I'm still a little undecided on how I want to finish this. I was going to make all these kind of fall frenzy smalls into pillows for my pillow bowl. Um, but I really like those kind of black wooden paddle boards I've been seeing lately um, that people have been doing a lot of finishes on. And I thought that would be really cool for this. So I've ordered one from the Cottage Needle maybe on Etsy. Uh, so I'll, I'll let y'all know when I start finishing these how I end up finishing it. But I might try the little kind of wooden paddle board finish on this, or it might get turned into a pillow, but we will see. Yay. So that's what I finished this week for Fall Frenzy. And let me show you what else I worked on this week. Uh, I did start my third Fall Frenzy small, which was Autumn by Lizzie Kate. There's Autumn. And this is just kind of, let's see, does it have a name? Just says Seasons. 171 seasons. Um, I don't know if this chart is still available. I thought 123 Stitch had them all, but it looks like they don't have everything. Uh, so anyways, number 171. And this is the first chart I've done out of this. Eventually I want to do them all, especially look at that summer one. So cute. They're all really cute. But anyways, so I started on autumn. Um, I am using the called for flosses. Let me just show it to you first. So here's my little start on autumn. And I am using the called for floss, but I have changed position. Well, I guess I'll, the only thing I've changed is I changed the um, autumn to this deep red rather than the brown that it called for. Um, I just thought, I don't know, I just wanted to see a little bit more of the red in the piece. So I've changed that. And I'm stitching it on a 36 count picture this plus fawn. Um, and I think this is going to be a super quick finish this week. Um, but I just got this started a couple days ago. I figured two finishes for the first week of Fall Frenzy was plenty. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really proud of myself. I stayed really on track this week, which you'll see in a minute. I'll show you a couple more things. Uh, but I also let myself have some rewards for, you know, finishing some of these fall projects. So... Let's just keep moving. Okay, so that was number one. <laughs> so I worked on um, my Barbara Anna, A Wicked Plant, some more this week. This is so cool. I've really gone down a rabbit hole of Barbara Anna stuff lately, which I'll show you a little more of later. I, I knew her name or I knew the, the you know, the, the, the patterns, but I hadn't really looked at them much until I found this piece that I wanted to stitch. She has so much cool stuff, um, so much stuff. So anyways, I might be stitching more later, but let me show you a wicked plant. Here she is. So I am stitching this one on a 40 count lakeside vintage maple sugar. And I am changing up the called for. I'm using the called for black. I think it's Raven. Um, but I am changing up uh, some of the colors to add in oranges and pinks. 
um, into the berries and the flowers. So yeah, I'm really loving how this one's turning out. Um, this is how wide it's going to be. I'm all the way to the edge um, on the pattern. Um, just a lot of fill in of some quilty stars and some letters and more leaves and berries. Oh, and I have <laughs> the fun little wicked plant, the piranha plant. I, I keep calling it a piranha plant like it's in Mario. What are they? Venus fly traps. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, so that's what's going to go right there. And there's some more little kitty cats, I think. There's another kitty cat over here. Um, this thing is so fun. So um, I'm hoping I can get this done next week. I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk plans later. We'll see. Okay. And the last project that was part of my fall frenzy, which isn't fall, but needs to get done during fall, um, is my Cooler Design Studio Stocking heirloom my how do I say it cooler design studio heirloom stocking I think that's the pattern name um, and then it's called um, the holiday study here it is Let's see if I hold it up a little back it up I'm making a lot of really good progress on this and I'm excited. Um, this is kind of where, oh wait, over here, where the foot starts to kick out and this kind of starts coming around. So I'm really like in the foot almost now, um, or I am, because especially with like with that duck and stuff, I started stitching, I don't know, is it a goose, a duck, um, sitting on the floor under here. Um, I got a lot more details in under the desk and on Santa in this bookshelf. And I did some more back stitching on the wallpaper. Um, I don't think I've worked any more on the name. I'm kind of saving that for last. Um, but yeah, that's my progress on my stocking. Um, and I'm loving how this is turning out. It's so fun. So yay. And this is staying on the list for next week. I got to get it done. So I'm going to keep on working. Okay, and so my last whip this week um, was my like special treat whip. <laughs> so on the days where I had finished um, my little Halloween tree or uh, Ye Old Crow or had gotten a lot of progress on, you know, Wicked Plant or the stocking, um, I wanted to work on one of my samplers. And so um, the one I picked to work on this week with my extra stitchy time um, was Land That I Love show you the front of the pattern. Here is Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. Um, and here is where I'm at. Back it up, back it up. <laughs> Oh, so cool. Do I have it all in there? Barely. Oh, this is so fun. Here, I'll give you a close-up view. So fun. Um, so, yeah, I really love how this one, this one is coming along. I've just been mostly working down the right side. I'll probably, once I finish that house, um, come across and just do the whole top of it. Um, I started extending the border across. Um, which I think looks great. I want to get, you know, all the way over here and actually um, build the whole border, but I haven't gotten to that yet because I keep getting distracted by all the pretty red flowers. Um, this little urn, I haven't done the kind of underneath yet, but oh, this is so cool. And I want to do more on this strawberry border. I mean, I just want to keep working on this. <laughs> um, this one I am stitching on the 36 count limestone by Zweigert that I over dyed that I talked about earlier. And I'm using all the called for colors except for blue corn, which I couldn't find, which is this blue in the stems. Um, so I'm using Weeks Deep Sea instead, which seems to be a pretty spot on match. So, um, but otherwise all the called for. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so let's talk about a couple other things I worked on this week. <laughs> um, I tried some, not tried, I did some fabric dyeing. 
Oh, well, I guess I should say try. So um, in the past when I've dyed fabric um, from scratch, it's just been Monaco. Um, I get the tubes of white or tan Monaco, um, dunk them in writ dye, make them a color I want, put them in the oven to bake them and then iron them, um, like kind of heat lock in the dye, I guess. I don't know. They're, I'm sure they're not color fast. Don't wash, you know, writ dyed fabric probably. Um, but uh, I had never dyed linen from scratch, like from white, you know, I'd only over dyed linen that I'd bought. So I was like, let me just get, you know, um, a half yard or a fat half of some plain white Zweigert and try dyeing that along with some Monaco that I needed to dye for my mom. Um, it, did, it didn't come out exactly as I wanted. Uh, I'll show you the Monaco. Um, I made this pretty piece for my mom for some more Christmas ornaments. She wanted kind of an aqua. Um, this is a little more denim-y blue. I, I mixed uh, teal with a little bit of denim blue and then kind of over dyed it with some brown. Um, and I think this is super pretty and I really like the kind of um, modeling and, you know, variation that came out on this. Uh, uh, it's a little more blue blue than um, aqua, but I think it's still super pretty. So. Mom, here's one of the fabrics I dyed for you. And then I just did um, a brown and tan dye on a piece of white um, to kind of, you know, just make a little antique-y, you know, brown um, piece. So those, great, those came out great, exactly how I wanted. Um, and then another thing I wanted to do while I had the dyes out is I had a piece of... 40 count lakeside linen vintage wild rose which is a really pretty pink fabric but it was pink like real pink and I I think I thought it was a little grungier and so you know I've had it in my stash probably for a year and I was like what am I gonna do with this um you know like I don't know so I was like let me just you know dunk it in some brown and tan writ dye and try to bring the color down a little bit and I think it turned out really well so but also, <laughs> I just looked down and remembered, I also have to explain this part. Um, I started stitching on it. <laughs> so I have another new start. I was not done with my whip, sorry, I lied. <laughs> uh, so let me show you the fabric and then I'll show you what I started. <laughs> um, so here's the pretty pink fabric. Oh, is that gonna be? It's real hard to tell this color on this light, isn't it? Um, it's just a real pale, soft ballerina pink that I kind of grunged up. Um, and actually, let me just let you look at my new start. Uh, so on this fabric that I over dyed, I started Merry Christmas by Blackbird Designs. I had shown you that I had this one kitted up with all the floss, um, I think in my sampler video a few episodes ago. Uh, and I had originally bought this pink fabric thinking, oh, I'll, um, I'll stitch this crazy colorful, sweet little girly Christmas sampler on the pink, but it was too pink, too crazy. Um, so I uh, decided to tone down the fabric and I really wanted to see what the colors looked like. And I love it. I think it's so cool. It's kind of washing out a little bit um, in the light. It's not bad though. Uh, so yeah, I got started. Let me show you how all the floss looks with it because I think it's cool. Here are all the crazy flosses on my pink fabric. I'm excited and look at just how small and sweet this little thing is going to be. I mean, it's like three and a half inches by eight inches. It's so little. I don't think I realized how little and the, I mean, I'm stitching this on 40 count. So, you know, mine is a little bit smaller, but the called for is 35 count on this. So like not that much smaller. This is a really sweet, like little sampler. Um, what's the stitch count? 77 by 140. So. I should be able to get this one done by Christmas. We'll see. I don't have plans to continue working on it this week because, you know, it's fall frenzy. But I had to start it. It's so cute. Um, and so the other thing I'll talk about with fabric dyeing, I did dye some linen, some white linen, and I 
didn't show you that here because it didn't turn out how I wanted it. Um, linen takes the dye a lot more strongly than the Monaco, um, at least for Brit dye um, and what I did in my kitchen. Um, and I think I didn't rinse enough of the dye out before I baked it, before I tried to set it. And so some of the dye kind of collected in spots and made some really insane kind of jagged lines of color through my linen, which I think can be a really cool effect if that's what you're going for. But I was going for kind of an all over color with very subtle variation. Um, so the linen looks a little crazy <laughs> that I dyed. Um, I think one piece of it I will use, like I'll cut around, like cut out a section I like and use for some ornaments and some smalls and stuff. So eventually you'll see it, but um, it's something to write home about right now. And I did have some requests um, when I shared that on Instagram that I was dyeing fabric for um, doing a fabric dye tutorial. Um, and I will say on Monaco, sure. <laughs> Monaco is so simple to dye, it's very forgiving. Um, linen, I'm not there yet. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just experimenting with linen. So we'll see, eventually maybe down the road, I'll show you guys how I dye and how I experiment in my kitchen with Brit dye and fabric, but um, Probably not anytime soon. There's some good videos. I think Kitten Stitcher. I might try to link something below. One, I'll go back to my YouTube watch history from like a few years ago. Um, oh gosh, can I even do that? I don't know. Don't hold me to that. I'll try to Google and find it. Um, but uh, there's a couple good tutorials that I've watched um, that have helped me along, you know, the way. So, anyways, that was my fabric dyeing um, adventure for this week. <laughs> okay, so. Let's get into some haul, y'all. Uh, I'd like to say it's calmed down. It has not. <laughs> so, Kim, you know, avert your eyes. Don't watch this part because oh, I got so many cool things this week. Um, I actually drove up to Copper's Cove, which is about an hour north of where I am in Cedar Park um, near Austin. And uh, to my, I guess, local needle workshop because it's the closest one to me. It's an hour away. Um and it's called Needleworks. And it's a super cool store. It's, this is the second time I've been. Um, so Rob and I drove up on Tuesday. I had a day off. So we drove up on Tuesday, um, shopped, and then went and got some barbecue and came home. So uh, let me show you, oh my gosh, getting to go inside a Needleworks store. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's like, yeah, it's great. I just don't ever get to do it. It's like twice a year. Um, so, oh, it's so much fun. And I always spend too much money, but, I was the only person in the store and it was so nice and um, actually that is where I found this tiger's eye 35 count so um, I've already shown you this so this is part of my haul was this um, tiger's eye fabric and oh my gosh I, I the poor woman was like what are you doing because she she I asked her for this fabric and I was like hey can I get um, a 10 by 10 surged and she was like okay she's like what's the stitch count and I was like oh, I don't have a project picked out. And she's like, but you're asking me for a 10 by 10 cut. And I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out later. And she's like, most people have a project in mind and they tell me their stitch count and then I cut the piece to fit, you know, what they plan to stitch. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I didn't realize that this would look so good on it yet. I just was like, oh, I need that orange fabric. So I was like, yeah, just 10 by 10. That's fine. I'll find a small for it. <laughs> she was so confused. She was like, that's not how this works. And I was like, it's fine. I'll find something. <laughs> so anyway, so she very kindly cut me a 10 by 10. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I ended up stitching the old grow. <laughs> um, the other piece of fabric that I got there um, that's not, uh, that I've already used is the half, fat half of the white swigert. So I got that there and um, I've already dyed it. So you won't see this in my haul. Um, but let me show you what else I found at the store. <laughs> Uh, and let me get it all, I just kept it all in the bag it came in. Oh, the crinkle nightmares. Let me get it out of here and then I'll show you. Okay, so what did I find? I'm not even going to go in any order. I'm just going to start grabbing stuff. Um, I got a bunch of flosses. I needed another deep sea for land that I love. Um, brandied pears. Old hickory. Oh my gosh. Old hickory has been impossible to find by Gast. Um, I grabbed two of them because I have a char one chart I know that needs it. Um, but they've just been, you know, MIA. So I grabbed some old hickory. Um, I grabbed a super old classic color works because it says crescent colors. Uh, crab cakes, old brick, 
Um, yeah, so just a random assortment of flosses that I had written down that I needed before I went in. And then I found, um, so on some of these charts, uh, I know they're new and easily available. Um, a couple of these, like this one in my hand, I have no idea if they're still in print or if the store just had them. Um, so apologies. Um, this one is a Blackbird Design Reward of Merit pattern that I hadn't seen and it's called May Basket. And I just thought it was so sweet. Um, and I want this, I, similar to fall, I don't have a ton of spring stuff. I, had, I have some more than I have fall, but um, I thought this would be such a sweet little finish for um, my pillow basket for spring. So I got this little May basket. Um, I also, uh, let's see, I got some Lady Dot Creates Country Rust and Vanilla Rick Rack. Never have too much Rick Rack for finishing. Um, let's see. I got, this is a new chart, so this is definitely something you can get. Blackberry Lane Designs, Baby It's Cold Outside. Look at that little bird. I love this. I was showing my mom, I sent my mom some pictures of what I got, and she was like, I wanna stitch that bird. I was like, yeah, same mom, same. <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, Oh yeah, so this one's cool. This is another Blackbird design that I had not seen, so apologies now if it's not available. Um, it's called the Garden Fair. Um, oh, look how cute that is. It says, and spring arose on the Garden Fair. Again, a kind of another spring chart that I thought would be so cool, finished as like a little small. Um, I think it's about like three by four. So it's, it's a small one. Um, and then this came packaged with all the floss you needed. So love when that happens. <laughs> um, so I bought this one as kind of like a little mini kit. I spent a lot of time in the Blackbird design section of her store. So I also picked up another new one um, that has been out for a little while. And this one is called All Joys for Thine. Um, a lot of people have stitched this and it's a beautiful. So I needed that for my collection. <laughs> and then the, is this the last thing? No, a couple things. Um, I got a Blackbird design book called And Blossoms as the Rose. It's super cool. I love this little tiny one, or not tiny, but like little four by four up in the corner. And I really, really want to do this drum. I've like kind of got obsessed with drums lately. Um, I haven't made one, but I have a lot of charts to do so. So a drum is in my future. Okay, so then the last thing I got was this little um, Deck the Halls by Blackbird Design book that I'm sure people have seen. I think, um, who was it? Somebody was stitching these recently. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember now. Was it Jen Stitching Niche? Was she going through these? Somebody was recently. Anyways, I got these little strawberries. They are all the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, oh my gosh. One of them is on Sanguine, which I have a piece of for the Sewing Club project. So I'll get to use that there. Um, where is, there's one called the Christmas Cactus that I think might be my favorite. Well, oh no, I do love the Christmas Visitor. Hold on, let me show you. And I love how they show it framed as like an oval or a strawberry. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Look how cute that is. Oh, okay. So I, I found this on Tuesday. <laughs> um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that on Monday, I had a little um, brief insanity of making some strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> um, Celeste Creates uh, totally inspired me. If um, you haven't watched her YouTube videos, I think she has three three or four of them now. Um, and she has a great Instagram page. Um, I'll link her below. Uh, she posted a tomato pin cushion that she had made. And it had reminded me that, oh yeah, I had wanted to make some stuffed strawberries for my summer pillow bowl. And I know it's late in the season, but I was like, oh, let's just go sit down and make some strawberries real quick. And so I um, had Googled and found um, a tutorial that I had liked before. So I pulled it up um, and I made some strawberries. <laughs> so let me show you. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh, look at these. Look at these cute little strawberries. Um, this is just a little pink and white stripe. Um, I made a star. A lot of the patterns show you tacking these down. I kind of like them wild and loose, just like kind of like the little leaves on top of a strawberry. I don't know, we'll see. Um, little red cone flower with a darker shade of green. And then this one I made out of wolf felt and I just tacked in some little black seeds or little, you know, um, little spots on the strawberry and finished it with a little topper. And um, these are just stuffed with polyfill. Um, it really took like, you know, five minutes of strawberry once I cut um, all the pieces out. Uh, so these are super quick to make. I, this tutorial is really handy. Um, she does have a, a slightly different finish. These are tacked down on the piece, but um, I'll link her tutorial below. It's free online um, if you're interested. And these look so great in my little pillow bowl. And maybe I'll insert a picture. I took a picture of it, so I'll insert a picture up here. Um, but anyway, so I was like on a strawberry kick on Monday night, and then I go into Needleworks on Tuesday, and I saw this little Deck the Halls strawberry book, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have it um so I'm really excited uh to finish up some little cross stitch strawberries as well for um for Christmas oh it's so cool anyways can't wait to work on these at some point um okay so I told you <laughs> that I got on a Barber Anna kick um so one thing I did was I got online and actually this was inspired on Instagram by Emily C. Eclectic Possessions, um, who has also a great YouTube channel that I'm sure you're all watching. Um, but if you're not, go watch it. Uh, she is working on Santa's Trips by Barbara Anna Design. And so I had to go, <laughs> I had to go buy the PDF. It's a mystery stitch along. It's coming out, I think, in nine parts or 10 parts. This is part one that I just printed out. So cute. Um, this is my bad uh, color copy. So look it up online. I'll put a link below. Um, the colors are gorgeous. They're, it's just stitched in DMC, all solid colors. Um, and it's beautiful. Um, of course, I made it slightly more complicated for myself because I decided I really want to stitch it in NPI. I love stitching in silk. And really, I've only done it on drawn thread projects that call for it, um, or on a one color project where I can just pick one color of floss. Um, and so I pick silk in those cases because I really like working with silk. So I decided to do my own color conversion um, to NPI and I have those on order. I'm really hoping what I've picked is gonna look good. I mean, I tried to stick, you know, to the to the color she picked, but just with silk. So maybe I'll get to update you guys that on that next week when those colors come in, but I'm very excited to stitch this Barbara Anna um, Christmas stitch along. I will not be keeping up with the stitch along in terms of, you know, as new parts get released, I'll be stitching them. I'll just, you know, whenever the final chart comes out, download it and keep it in my stash. And at some point I will stitch this. And I'm so excited about it. It's really pretty. So while I was on FlossTube last week, just watching random videos like I like to do while I'm stitching, um, I found a channel called Hollis Hands Creates and watched her video, um, loved her projects, loved like all the stuff she had up in her home, like all her decor, looking at everything in the background of her video. Um, I loved, I loved her video. And I realized that she had an Etsy shop and that she was in Texas just a few hours from me. And I was like, oh my gosh, uh, a slightly local, you know, online needle workshop. So I went over to her Etsy and found some really cool stuff. Um, and so that came in the mail a couple days ago. So the first thing that I've already been using and are tucked into my land that I love bag are this adorable um, pair of scissors. Um, it's like a little red rope style handle. Uh, yeah, I think these are so cute. I think this is what I thought I was going for with those little gems I showed you last week, the little tiny ones. This is more my speed. <laughs> I mean, I'm still using the little gems. I think they're right here for comparison I think they're both Kelmscott Kelmscott designs yeah so anyways got a little pair of scissors 
And then I got a piece of Picture This Plus Wren in 36 count and a couple random flosses that I needed. And then I got the Home for the Holidays by Blackbird Designs. So a couple videos ago, I asked everyone to tell me what their favorite Blackbird design pattern was. And far and away, the most common uh, pattern that was named was Christmas Garden. So I was like, I'm going to need to own Christmas Garden. And then I didn't realize that this is also the book that has that really pretty bird. Um, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. Where is it? This bird. Oh, so cool. Um, it's called Tis the Season. So yeah, this project, this book has so many cool projects in it. Um, I can't wait to like really dig in and start kidding stuff up. Um, but yeah, love this. Although let me, okay. Since I know a lot of you have stitched Christmas Garden because you all commented so a couple weeks ago. If you stitched Christmas Garden, would you mind telling me if you use the called for floss or not? I've pulled, I have all the called for floss. It's only four colors. So I have the called for floss for Christmas Garden. And I have to say I'm not loving Calico Kitty. It's really wildly variegated. And I have two skeins and they don't look a lot alike to each other. Um, I really like the picture, the Christmas Garden picture, like how it looks. But, do, you know, just if you let me know, did you use that red? Did you change it? Um, what did you guys stitch your Christmas gardens in if you stitched it? Um, I would love to know. Uh, so that's one of the patterns I got from her. And then the other pattern I got from her is another trilogy pattern and something I hadn't seen. Let's see, is this new or is this an older one? I don't think it's going to tell me. Oh, 2007. Okay, so this is an older pattern. I don't know why I thought it was new, um, but look how cute this is. It looks huge in this photo. I think it's 80 by 80, so it's not small, but it will be a small. I'll probably stitch it on 40 count and make it, you know, a four by four type um, small finish. I just love this. And then <laughs> one of the main reasons, I mean, okay, so it's an overall super cute design, but one of the main reasons I got it is for this little kid in this pumpkin costume. And I'm sure everyone, you know, who grew up in the eighties had this costume. Um, but there is a photo of me in our local newspaper when I was, I think 10 months old. See, I was born in June. So I, oh, maybe I was like 14 months old. It was when I was a year old. Um, and I'm in this little pumpkin costume. I, my parents had taken me to like a little local Halloween costume contest and they included my picture in the news article and I love it. And so when I saw, you know, and then all my sisters had worn this and I think even some of my nephews have worn this costume. So um, yeah, I saw that little, that little kid in the pumpkin and I was like, oh, I have to have this. Look how cute. Mom, I don't think I showed you this one. So look at this. So cute. <laughs> Do you guys like that I just like talk to my mom and my sisters through my videos because I know they watch them? <laughs> um, oh, you guys, there's more. Okay. <laughs> I also ordered from 123Stitch. Um, they haven't cut me off yet. I also learned after last week's video that a lot of other people are ordering the same amount. So... All right, I'll stop feeling bad. <laughs> we're all we're all ordering from one two three stitch. Um, I ordered a piece. I can't stop ordering thirty six count picture this plus. I think it's my favorite count and manufacturer. Um, it it actually is Lakeside Linens, but you can't ever find it, or I can't. <laughs> so I got another piece of thirty six count picture this plus in bramble, which is a color I hadn't um, I haven't had before. And then again random flosses that I needed. I don't remember what these are for, but I assume I'll figure it out later. Um, I also got one of the new um, Hometown Holidays. I've actually only stitched one of the Hometown Holidays, but I probably have like nine or 10 of them. Um, I got really inspired by Deb from Country Stitches, Country Stitchers, um, and her kind of all together piece of these. And so I've been kind of collecting these and I might, when I stitch them, do a layout like hers and then um, also probably turn a few more of them into ornaments. I have one ornament already, but um, they're all just so cute. So if a new one comes out that I like, I grab it and add it to the stash. 
Okay. And then I also got uh, two birds of a feather charts. And these are now out of print. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to grab them and have them because I know I want to stitch them at some point and they won't be available when I want them. So this one is called Holiday Seasons. And I had seen this and liked it. And the thing that held me back was the fabric color. It's like a really dark kind of green, right? Um, and it's not necessarily what I would stitch these on, but I was looking at like the actual designs. Like, look at that little winter one. And they're all so cute. And I was like, just imagine it on different fabric. Cause I would probably stitch it on just something neutral and love it. Or even maybe like a chalkboard black. I keep saying that I have never stitched anything on chalkboard black, but eventually I will. Um, anyway, so I had to have those birds of a feather. And then the second one I got is the mermaid sampler. Oh my gosh. So cute. I love this. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm looking at the mermaid and I'm like, are those seashells? You be the judge. <laughs> okay. Oh, last thing. It's a Barbara Anna. Um, I found her pattern. I think it was advertised to me on my Wicked Plant pattern. <laughs> and I was like, success, it worked. It's called Christmas Joy. So cool. Um, and I got the called for DMC, which includes this like, what is it called? A variation or it's like a variegated DMC, which I've never stitched with before, um, that red one. So um yeah we'll see how that turns out i stitch up and down rather than side to side so my stripes are always vertical rather than horizontal so um i don't know i may have to change up the way i stitch if i'm going to use that super super variegated stripey dmc but yeah that's uh the last thing <laughs> that came into my home this week <laughs> so many things <laughs> okay so for next week um, week two of my fall frenzy, I am going to finish, um, my Lizzie Kate autumn. That's goal number one. It should be super quick. Um, and then I want to try to finish or get very close to finishing a wicked plant by Barbara Anna and continue working on my Christmas stocking. Um, I think if I only worked on those three things, a wicked plant would get done, but I don't know. I might, I might need to get back to consider the lilies or, um, Oh joyous day as kind of a reward this week. If I get a bunch of stuff done on the stocking and on, um, my little autumn small, just, I miss my samplers. <laughs> and speaking of samplers, um, I keep hearing this week watching floss Two people talking about sampler September. And I, so I was Googling and I was like, what is sampler September? And it doesn't look like it's anything formal. I found Kitten Stitcher's videos from last year about it. I think she, I think this is something she kind of started. And it was just a celebration of samplers based on what I can tell. She did a bunch of videos talking about the history of samplers, one she stitched, um, one she's bought, um, and just going through the kind of, you know, just like what makes a sampler special. And I thought that was so cool. And so I definitely want to do something for Sampler September. I, I'm no good at like, you must start this many things or you must work on this many things. I mean, I guess I'm okay at it because my first week of Fall Frenzy went okay, but um, it probably won't be something rigid, but I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this, that this week. So this, ne this next week is gonna be all about finishing up my fall projects that I have on the go and want to get done. Um, but then I think next week, I'm gonna try and make a plan um, for September. Uh, let's see, what was next, what'll be next week? Next week will be like one of the last days of, um, let me just look at the date. Yeah, it'll be like August 30th, right? So perfect, yeah. So I'll start talking about um, my September, sampler September plans next week. So that means I gotta think of them this week. If anybody has, I don't know, is there like a Facebook group or like a hashtag or is somebody already like thought of like, what to do for Sampler September. My kind of initial thoughts were just working on an existing whip for a week and starting something new and kind of alternating, you know, new start each week with um, something existing. Um, but I don't know. 
If anybody has any good ideas for Sampler September, let me know. Um, I'm going to think about it this week and I'll let you guys know my plans next week. Thank you guys so much for visiting with me this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing all, all the things that I stitched on this week. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. So I will be back next week with a second week update of Fall Frenzy. See you then.